Good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is in your country. And thank you for being with us today at this virtual parallel NGO CSW event, where we introduce to you the next step of the Women's World Summit Foundation's 75% campaign, which has as its title, Empowering Women and Youth via 75% Leadership Training in the Digital Age to claim a seat at the decision-making tables. My name is Maria Elfriede Pradavant and many know me under the nickname Ellie. For new participants, please note that the Women's World Summit Foundation was created in 1991 as a Swiss international NGO with uh, ECOSOC status. And we have over the past 30 years developed several development programs for women, children and youth. We need more and more such digital spaces, especially for women and youth where we can not only share solutions, but also train women and youth to understand our different perspectives, challenges, and how to unite the women, children, and youth to rise and claim their seat at the decision-making tables in every country. For those among you who are new to the WWSF uh, programs, of work. You can find all the information on our website www.woman.ch. Our leadership training for women and youth is not only an idea whose time has come, but it is made possible because of the digital age technology, where civil society, world leaders and the UN community are already collaborating fiercely at many global future forums and UN summits for the future to find new solutions to our broken world, leaving no one behind. I wish to clarify for you our vision, and I quote on this purpose, Buckminster Fuller, a famous US philosopher and visionary who said, and I quote, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. You change something by building a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Paradigm shifts happen when prevailing systems are deemed inadequate and or failing, and when another option is widely viewed as better. End of his quote. The fact that six billion of us can no longer be ignored will improve the current UN 5050 gender equality campaign to advance women's rights until we get to the place where a new paradigm can be introduced via the 75% campaign, which will need to become widely known, discussed and endorsed to be implemented and to demand a seat at the decision-making tables to ensure the implementation of the sustainable development and urgent peace agenda. So what is our WWSF plan and strategy? We are inviting women, children, youth, peace and human rights and development organizations to introduce this campaign in their countries and create 75 campaign hubs in partnership with WWSF and in your established organizations, associations, groups and NGOs and launch broad civil society conversations to co-design with your current leaders the solutions to our troubled world where 75% of the population can no longer be ignored and deserve their rightful seat in all major decision-making tables. WWSF proposes to empower civil society actors to demand a more equal playing field when it comes to respecting the UN member states' decisions and promises. Made in 1990, for example, at the World Children's Summit. In 1995, UN Fourth World Conference on Women in China, almost 30 years ago. And at its famous platform, at the famous platform for action, the annual UN Commission on the status of women and their regular agreed conclusions for governments. And last but not least, in 2015, the new Sustainable Development Goals Agenda for the delivery of the promises made 
for 2030. The 75% leadership training provides registered member organizations with steps and tools to empower women and youth in their respective countries to unite and rise, demand from current leaders inclusion in co-designing the space in which we and our children and grandchildren want to live and thrive. The 6 billion out of the world population today of 8 billion need to unite and claim their rightful seat at all decision-making tables in every country to change the course of our destructive development model, turning the world around for good, inclusiveness and replace the global war culture with ministries for peace building, massive human rights and digital age education, and the urgent realization of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Let me share with you now a few ideas for action for your local and national campaign hubs building. First, continue to tell the world about the six billion of us that can no longer be ignored. Leadership trainers for our 75 Training forums will include role models, leaders in relevant organizations, experts in training and coaching, men, women and youth combined, to empower participants in how to start the needed system change in governments, in the media, and continued regular and urgent IT training to facilitate the transformation in how we interact with humanity as we, the peoples of the United Nations, leaving no one behind, as it states in the UN Charter. Also seek to motivate and inspire national networks of women, children and youth, especially in the human rights organizations, national networks and women's groups to introduce this campaign into their existing established active organizations generating conversations for local national partnerships, the media and co-sponsorship, for attending leadership training forums and begin to build a movement for transformational leadership everywhere. Third, meet other registered campaign partners online and create Google groups for sharing your success and challenges, the vision and work of millions of civil society actors who are mostly working for good, especially the women, children and youth, have little or no space in participating in decision-making processes and how to end century-old ways of fighting wars and killing, discrimination and neglect, spending incredible amounts of resources on armaments and defense budgets and not putting people's needs, their rights and their aspiration for peace and stability first. Also demand that the important UN conventions and UN agendas for actions are respected by all governments, members of the UN family, and are implemented by current world leaders as promised at their numerous UN summits and annual high-level political forums, and their results and achievements be made widely visible use the 75% campaign narrative, but also create your own adapted to your culture. Inform the media regularly, invite them as partners to change the world with you for the better. The campaign is about hearing the cry of humanity, ending the arms race, the production, use and selling of weapons. Keep asking, what is our human responsibility to each other? The world's richest 1% of the world today have more than twice as much wealth as 6.9 billion of the population. Nearly half of the world's population, 3.4 billion people, is living on less than $5.50 a day. Today, 258 million children, one out of every five, will not be allowed to school. Globally, women earn 24% less than men and own 50% less of the wealth. This information is 
sourced by, yeah, this information is from Oxfam International. Another idea is use and live spiritual and universal values that can be found in the preamble of the Charter of the United Nations. Oneness can be enhanced through publicizing the spiritual underpinnings of the United Nations. Women's leadership needs to become the norm, says Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, and we join him in his vision to realize his dream. We know today that nonviolence is a powerful game changer, and we now need to secure it as our national weapon if we want to survive. I will stop here and thank you all for your listening. Remember, you can always revisit all our presentations on our YouTube channel and on our website. Thank you for your listening, and I will now invite our speakers to share with you their vision and activities. I start with Christine Engwick, who is the Woman Diversity and Inclusion Director at CSPOC and founder and president of WIN. Hello. I'm Christina Engwig, and it's a great honor to be here with all of you today and to discuss and think about how we can actually look at innovation and technological change and education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and empowerment of all women and all girls. Now, I grew up in Norway. I've traveled the world. I've worked for many, many years empowering and inspiring women on absolutely all continents in most countries and uh, bringing women together, empowering, sharing, educating, learning from and learning with, as well as teaching myself. So it's, it's a beautiful moment. Um, and it's a very hopeful moment in many ways. So why is it so hopeful? I believe it's a hopeful time because Never before have we been more educated. Never before have we had more experience and the possibility to come together to connect. So this is all great. We are more awake and learning from other generations, from other cultures, from other nations. So there's many beautiful things. And of course, we live in a very challenging time also. So there are a few things we need to be really awake to. So one of the things that we need to do in this time is Besides empowering each other, we need to awaken each other too. And we need to be awake to um, the patriarchal system that's been running around for many, many, many years that has made us believe we are not good enough, both from external domination pressure to often also a little voice inside that made us believe that lie as well. So you want to awaken from that, knowing that's a good lie. We are good enough. Also, we want to awaken from a paradigm that's been based on too much competition, a system that requested and needed an enemy in order for us to thrive. That's not true at all. We are instead promoting a collaborative system because we as sisters with amazing brothers can work together and we know that's the way, working together with each other and also with nature herself. So this is some of the things we need to be awake to today in this time of great change. And when it comes to the to the change of technology and uh, and the, how it is accelerating also a change, is that you need to be aware of this change and be awake there too. And I believe so much that there's so many good things and so many bad things at the same time. The good things, I mean, technology can help us and give us support from heavy lift to dissemination of information in, at the speed of light. When we have something good to share, we want to share it and now we can do it very fast. And that is really fascinating. But so why do we need to be awake to the bad part? Yeah, we need to make sure we are at the table making decisions that we have women and girls educated in science so we can be in those labs developing these products and also that as citizens and as consumers not only also simply citizens that we are awake to what we want to buy and what we don't want to buy we have power we are not powerless so this is also very important today that we are educating ourselves about what is sustainable what is not what's supporting women what's not and that in our education, that we not only learn the normal skills of technology or languages, literature, history, and all of those things, but we also learn the psychology of unconscious biases 
and how we can awaken from them, become aware of them, judgments we may have towards others and ourselves. So uh, this is important in our education, also intergenerational education, so that women that are older, those in the middle and the younger ones have a chance to spend time together and integrate our wisdom and our fresh knowledge and knowing that everybody has something to contribute with and that's the time and this is the moment and uh, to come together to create better connections freedom make sure we can create something we are at the brink now we know we have to create another way not the way that has been but this new way where our creativity or beauty or wonderful knowledge or amazing wisdom and our connections really is needed or hearts is needed, or connection, or intuition. The whole woman is needed, and she's needed together with others. And I look forward to sharing more with you and learning more with you during this entire time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Christine, for your insights and recommendations, which we will share in our Zoom report. We'll always look forward to organizing with your organization, WIN, which stands for Women in Networking leadership trainings on many topics that demand world attention for change. Thank you again for being with us today. We now come to our next speaker, who is Omataya Mala Adebayo, Child Safeguarding Specialist at the NGO Haven Initiative for Women and Children, Development and Safety. Omataya is a Harvard EDX certif certified Child Safeguarding Specialist who is consistently advocating for the rights and development of women and children. She has a vast knowledge and solutions uh, to issues of child safeguarding, social protection, child trafficking and labor, abuse of minors and vulnerable adults. Omataya, you have the floor. Hello everyone and welcome to this program. A big thank you to Women's World Summit Foundation for this very great opportunity. And I commend the efforts of the non-government organization Committee on the Status of Women 67 session. Thank you for inviting me. I am Omotai Adibayo, and I bring greetings to you from Oyo State, Nigeria. I'll be speaking on the topic that says digital literacy is a tool for achieving gender equality. I'm a woman. I'm a founder of Avon Initiative. And I'm the executive director, and I know what it means for women to be included in decision making. Over the past few decades, there has been a massive improvement when it comes to women in medicine, in business, in law. Although these are male dominated fields, but when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, things aren't as promising. There is a decrease in the number of women, of youth that go into fields like this. And then there are reasons for this. Number one, we have insufficient awareness. People are not aware that we are in the information age and that the age comes with its own opportunities and that everybody would have or have access to the opportunity. There's no information. There is no awareness about this age and the beautiful things it comes with. I mean, the digital and the information age. So we need to create lots of awareness. Another challenge is non-affordability. So people can almost not afford the price of a mobile phone and they cannot even afford data. And the people who are disadvantaged and in the rural places, we want them to come on board, but they don't, they can't afford all those things. So they are not affordable. So it's not making them to key into the information age. Another thing is marginalization, especially on the part of women and girls. They feel that they are endangered species and then they should not have access to things that would empower them or maybe they should be laid back and they should not <clears throat> go with the trend. So they are marginalized, especially the youth too. So this makes them not to have access to digital skills. Another challenge is low digital skills. People don't have the required skills for them to access content, to share and to make use of already available content on the internet. And then digital literacy comes with lots of advantages. Number one, we have it helps us access, you know, to get access to consume, to share, and to, you know, and to get content online. You can get online to get information on something you're not even, you know, informed about. It's free there for everybody to access. Also, we have, it speeds up, you know, the learning process. If you are in the class 
and then you get to you get you get lessons from your lecturer you can go back to the corner of your room and then you educate yourself the more when you get connected online and you don't even need anybody to teach you in as much as you have android phone and then you have access to airtime and you have a data plan and you can put on your phone then you're connected to the digital age and you can get lots of information another advantage is it gives us constant access to materials, resources, I know, gives us access to global learning in the corner of your room. You can be in class without, you can be in university without even stepping out of, out of the house. You can get online, stay connected, and get all the information you need. Another thing is it facilitates collaboration. You can learn from people, from, from people, from other perspectives, from other countries and nations. For example, when I took a course on Harvard EDS during the lockdown, you know, I took a, a certificate course on, um, on, on child protection, which helped me to be certified as a child safeguarding specialist. I took that course during COVID. And then I didn't have to I didn't have to go out of my room. I only stayed connected online and I took all my lectures. I learned from people that I don't have not even seen before, and I have my certificate today. So that is what the advantage is of this digital age. Another thing is it gives us access to better communication. You can get feedbacks, you can ask questions, you can get to learn things, you know, by by, by sharing ideas with other people. It also gives access to personalized learning. Things you don't necessarily have to get anybody to teach you. You can get to learn those things yourself. And so what are the solutions to helping us get digital literacy for us to achieve gender equality? Number one, we need the government to help us create more awareness uh, you know, to the youth, to the children, and to women for them to know the benefits of digital literacy and for them to <clears throat> get access to things that will help them to be equipped. For example, in Africa, we have 40% of our youth. In the Arab Arab states, we have we have we have um, we have seventy three percent of youth, and in Asia Pacific, we have seventy two youth that make less use of the internet. Whereas in the Europe, we have ninety seven percent, and in America, we have ninety two percent. So you know there is a gap here because gender equality in Europe should be gender equality in Africa. So the youth need to know that they should be connected. Online and another thing, it, it helps us to reduce the challenge, especially for Nigeria, where I represent. It helps us to reduce the challenges of unemployment for the youth. Another thing, government can do for us is to develop policies, you know, that will make digital literacy a necessity, education a necessity for women, for children, and for everybody. Because according to the conventions on the rights of the child, you know, it says that children have a right to education, and we should not deprive them of that opportunity. So every youth too needs to be equipped with everything they need. So government should help us to develop policies in this light. And another thing government can do for us is to make data free. Wi-Fi should be free, especially for people in the rural places that cannot afford, you know, the prices of data and also make, you know, phones very, very affordable so that a layman can easily, you know, get, you know, afford to buy a mobile phone. Another thing is government should be intentional about inclusion. The women, the children, the youths, they are the 75% of the population and they are 6 billion strong. And we cannot afford to leave them behind. You cannot imagine a doctor having a fully equipped hospital without any patient. Because if he's there and he doesn't have any patient to diagnose, if the patient, him or her, he, he, you know, does not explain to the doctor what he or she is going through, that he cannot perform his own work to the fullest. If the women, the youth and children are left behind, then we cannot... Uh, we cannot attain gender equality because they matter a lot. So what can women and children equally do to uh, help us to ensure that gender equality is, is, you know, is achieved? Now they can be intentional about learning new things. You know, there are lots of things that the future holds for them and they shouldn't wait for anybody to teach them. So there are lots of things you can get to learn even by getting digital education. So I challenge the women, youth and children to ensure that they're intentional about learning new things. Also, they should see themselves as beings without which the world will not be all right. And I put it to the non-governmental organization. You also have a role to play in achieving gender equality and for us to ensure that digital education gets to everybody. Take the message of digital education to places where the media cannot get to. Because digital skills and the fourth industrial revolution, you know, they, they, they go hand in hand. And we need to ensure that the economy is good. I represent Nigeria, and I know that the youth makes a lot of the population 
and, and they can do a lot of things, but we need to ensure that they get the right digital education so that it will help them to key in, it will help them to prevent abuses, it will help them to speak against vices, and it will help them to be fully represented where decisions are taken. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for all you shared, and really we acknowledge your regular participation with the Women's World Summit Foundation campaigns, and we wish you all the best in moving 75% campaign forward in Nigeria, the biggest country in Africa. Congratulations. Thank you. Now we come to our last speaker, who is Ms. Rahana Riyavala. She is the Vice President and Senior Coordinator at the Self-Employed Women's Association, SEVA, in Ahmedabad, India. Ms. Rahana is associated with SEVA since 2001. She is Vice President of SEVA since January 2015. Ms. Riha Vala takes care of SEVA's operations, which include activities that strengthen and provide green and sustainable livelihoods, capacity building, microfinance, social security, including water, sanitation and hygiene, etc. Rihanna, you have the floor. Namaste and a warm welcome to all of you. Today, I represent more than 2.5 million poor women workers from informal economy organized with SEVA, a trade union founded by Shri Ilaban Bhatt in 1972 from Ahmedabad in Gujarat state and have today organically spread across 18 states of India. These are the workers who do not have any employer-employee relationship. SEVA also work in South Asian countries of Nepal, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Burma, Pakistan, and Maldives. We are happy to share that last year SEVA has completed 50 years of organizing poor informal sector women workers. The COVID-19 global pandemic and the accompanying economic crisis is a very unusual phenomenon that is being experienced by most of us. The worst hit, hit in this pandemic are the poor informal sector workers, especially women workers, both urban and rural. SEVA ensured regular communication with the members and we updated about their issues, needs and solved the same. This was possible only through the increased use of technology and providing training to the members and leaders on the use of technology in virtual platforms. With continuous training, guidance and hand-holding, all virtual meetings, trainings and webinars were organized and there was a major shift to digital or virtual mode. We used Zoom, Google Meet, WebEx, Microsoft Teams and video calls and conducted online meetings, trainings and webinars. Also, the members and various collectives started using virtual platforms for communication, education, awareness creation, marketing and much more. Livelihoods to ensure a value supply chain, which included small farmers growing vegetables, wherein small farmers aggregate their produces at the village level and was then transported to the city, sold in, with, uh, in the urban areas through Ruri and Kamla kiosk, as well as Seva's urban street vendors, thereby ensuring income security to both small farmers as well as street vendors. Rudi Sandesha Vyavar, a mobile-based application for the agro-based value chain of SEVA that allows online marketing and real-time inventory. Posters and messages have been prepared to create awareness on COVID-19, myths about it and precautions to be taken. The audio and visual messages are sent to the members through social media. This helps to ensure that the members are informed and have access to correct and proper information. Introduction was also, uh, trainings for the same was also given through the use of technology. Children engagement program aimed at meaningful engaging and educating children during the lockdown and in the immediate aftermath. The goal is to engage the children in different learning activities that are fun and interactive and could supplement their school curriculum. Digital financial literacy and introduction to mobile payment system. Access to seeds and fertilizers for small and marginal farmers. In this unusual and challenging situation, using technology to conduct the activities and understanding the situation and issues of the grassroots level poor informal sector women workers was not an easy task. This was possible for SEVA team due to several reasons. SEVA teams were not new to use of technology. 
they were already been using technology in their works in different ways but at the same time use of technology on a large scale by women at the grassroots level was not an easy task the preparedness to facilitate the work and ensure smooth functioning of the activities experiences of seva says that advanced digital technology if tactfully employed can bring about several beneficial changes by generating modern smart tech savvy employment opportunities for the user thus leading to overall growth and development of not only individuals but the community as a whole some such benefits of implementing digital technology at grassroots level are generation of new forms of smart employment opportunities upward mobility in global value supply chain scaling up of micro enterprises curbing out migration improving quality of traditional jobs real time data accessibility increased exposure to global trend WSF and Sister Ellie for joining hands together to work for rural poor women in our fight against poverty and achieving economic freedom for the rural poor. Thank you. Thank you so much.